Hello everyone, Mike with Spray Jones, and we're going to get into the answers now to the questions. But first I want to thank everybody that is currently a subscriber, and the people that were brave and asked a question. Gets the dialogue going, makes things fun and engaging. So I want to give a big thank you to everybody. Now let's get into the questions. Tom Sparrow wrote, I'm looking into building a home from a couple of shipping containers. As for insulation, I am torn between closed cell spray foam and a product called InSoFast. Will the spray foam retain moisture? What will the R value be with four inches of spray foam? Okay, shipping container is metal. This is a pretty easy decision to make. Uh, I took a look online at the InsoFast product. It's a panelized system. It's good. It's very good. It would definitely have some uh, applications in a numer numerous types of jobs. However, when you're dealing with metal and you're dealing with corrugated metal, you want to get something that is going to bond tenaciously to the metal and follow the profile, and that is spray foam. So my recommendation would be what we've done numerous containers with, and I'll put up some pictures here of sea cans that we've done. Either spray it and then frame it, or know exactly what you want for framing, lay out the framing, and then get a guy to come in, spray foam the walls, spray foam the roof. As far as R value is concerned for four inches of foam, uh, just looking at a modern chart here on thickness for the wall tight product, at four inches thick, the R value is 26. But I go back to that video that I have on how much foam do I need and check that out. Um, also, if you're gonna be dealing with a local building code or somebody who's gonna be checking up on this for building code, you're gonna to need to have some feedback as to what the law is in your area. Uh, three or four inches might be sufficient to satisfy the code officials. If this was in my backyard, I would be specking out probably three, absolutely no more than four inches of closed cell foam to the inside of the metal, and then you'd kiss your water problems goodbye. Uh, as far as Moisture retaining? No, the whole idea of the spray foam is there is no moisture retained. Uh, the metal can get as cold as it wants as long as it's fully bonded uh, to it. It's going to be sealed and you're not going to have any moisture problems between the foam and the metal the way that you would with the panelized product. Panelized product is going to have not follow the profile and you're going to have to figure out how to adhere it and then you're going to have seams. You would guaranteed uh, to have some sort of water and condensation build up behind the panels at some point. So, hope that answers your question. Ken wrote, thanks for the answer and question period. Wondering on the air temperature and structure temperature range for best application. Also, what are the regulations in regards to an application? Does each province share the same requirements or are they individual? Thanks for your channel and time. Air and structure temperature for best application. That's simple. Uh, above zero. Most manufacturers have products that can approach freezing. But like a lot of things in life, if it's warm, if it's above freezing point, above zero degrees Celsius, then you're good to go. I personally prefer that we be above zero, even in the winter time, so we get the structure warm. Warmth drives out the damp, promotes adhesion, makes sure there's no minor frost or minor moisture on the surface that's hard to see to the naked eye. Uh, things just go on better when things are dry and warm, so above zero. Um, there isn't really any other better way to make it other than just get things warmed up. And you've got to watch it. You get into winter time, you start putting heat to things. This is where you separate the men from the boys. Things want to condense, they want to frost up. Now you're going to run into issues. So if you're into winter time application, it's going to be a function of relative humidity and how much heat you're putting to it. But the pure answer is get it above zero. As far as regulations are concerned, in Canada, the Unified National Building Code of Canada is the law of the land. It has a ULC 
requirement, which stands for Underwriters Laboratory of Canada. It is the minimum standard that a CCMC registered foam has to meet along with the third party certification program and all of the regulations that go with it. No foam going into a structure that is under the NBC, National Building Code of Canada, uh, cannot meet, has to meet that standard. It, you, you can't use a non-rated foam is what I'm trying to say. So the provinces have to adopt that as the minimum standard and there's no exceptions. If you're not spraying a CCMC and ULC certified foam, you're digging it out at some point. This individual writes, Hi, I live in the Midwest on the border of climate zones 4 and 5. I would like to spray foam my roof deck. What I would like to know is should I use open or closed cell and how thick should it be applied? Thank you in advance. Okay, climate zones 4 and 5, I have to admit I'm not familiar with that. Being that I'm a Canadian, I took a quick look on the map here and it leaves a lot of speculation. Should I go this way? Should I go that way? Depending on exactly where you are in the Midwest. However, this is where closed cell spray foam excels at. If you have any doubt, there is no doubt. You go closed cell. The reason being is that it ends the discussion on vapor barrier where do you locate it what do you use do you need any spray on vapor barrier or sheet product or what have you like you would with the open cell product when you get to certain lines in the united states there are mandatory vapor barrier requirements and optional okay so when you are going closed cell you have the rolls royce system as far as the envelope is concerned now how thick when spraying it to the roof deck you are going to have to choose a contractor in your area that is up to speed on the building code for your area the reason being is that even in Canada the answer is given from one province to the next one region to the next can vary where I'm located we've had all of our our engineering done we've had all the paperwork submitted and the authorities having jurisdiction know and understand that we have the foam approved currently at four and five inches thick of closed cell but we just had a new building code come out and it upped all the standards so for me to tell you how much to have is wrong you're gonna have to choose a contractor that is familiar with what's going on and you're gonna have to talk with them as to how much to get specified now that caveat being stated it's very, very uh, wasteful once you get past four inches of foam. I mean, with closed cell foam, four and five inches, go back and check that chart. I mean, you're into the 90 plus percentile range. That doesn't mean that a building code isn't gonna tell you that you need to spray five or six, which is stupid, but we're not dealing with things that make sense here. We're dealing with legislators and that's a totally different world. I have got residences sprayed, garages sprayed, old homes sprayed with two inches of foam, both in the walls and in the roof. I've got jobs done with three inches of foam, and I've got jobs done with four. I've seen two inches go through some of the nastiest winters out there, but I've also seen, th seen three and four. What you want to do is make sure that you have enough to satisfy the code in your area, but not so much that you're just throwing money out the window, that diminishing return. And only you and your, your chosen contractor can determine that. But understand that in closed cell terms, as soon as you hit four inches, you know, you're throwing money out the window. You might have to go thicker to satisfy the regulations, but as far as performance in, is concerned, four inches of foam, that's deep freezer technology right there. So I hope that answers and helps. So user Mark Tr Tess wrote... I would like to see a tutorial type video on how to prep my house before application to save time and money. Thank you. Okay, prep. Let's go with two pound foam because it's the most complicated. Poly off your windows. Use a medium poly. Four mil is usually medium. Three or four mil. Uh, just enough staples in the poly to get it to hang. Then the next step is to come around, tape your stud faces. It's easier to pull tape off 
everything's clean you don't have to go around and scrape when you get to the windows you want to overlap the plastic and the tape to the stud so that on 360 degrees around the window it's fully sealed so you just need a few staples to hold it up there you don't need to do 27 staples per window like some of these fools do tape it then it doesn't get in back and behind it if you're going to be spraying your floor good idea to cover your floors up nobody wants to go around and scrape floors uh, there's going to be drips I call them little robin's eggs or what have you little little round balls of foam that land on the floor it can be a real hassle to go around and scrape that stuff up and people that don't do it leave a mess for the next guy and then the next guy's complaining and wanting to back charge you as far as going around make sure that the sawdust all the the wood chips um, the cuttings and trimmings from the electrician make sure all that junk is out of the walls make sure it's out of low-lying areas where where gravity's gonna collect it and, and funnel it to just get it swept out of there and then you know everything's good to go tight areas have got to be open um, the spray gun takes up quite a bit of space and it's not just perfectly magical that we can always get in if we can see into it and get the gun articulated into it then generally we can spray it but if you've got a tight L corner you're either gonna have to drill maybe with a two inch hole saw holes so we can inject the foam into it or you're going to have to take a sawzall and cut back some of the corners so that we can progressively maybe every foot up have an area to actually inject the foam into but I would get your installer of choice to help walk you through like get a pre walkthrough on the house and get them to talk to you about it as to what you can do to get ready the other thing is high areas scaffolding uh, temporary work platforms if you got a stairwell uh, that there's no way of getting to that portion of the roof or that portion of the walls you might have to put up some two by sixes and some plywood so the guys have something secure to stand on just make sure it's well built screwed and fastened into place we get a lot of temporary work platforms built you want to make it so that when the guys that are coming to spray your house get there they can back in easily uh, the windows are covered the studs are covered the floor is covered temporary platforms are built in easy access happy guys room to pull the hose in you know not a bunch of nails sticking out everywhere and get your building materials out of there you don't have flooring material or studs or pine or the siding for the house or or even the drywall hold off on getting the drywall delivered until well after the spray is done the more junk they have to walk around and move around the more they're going to want to charge you the grumpier they get then the worse the workmanship does so a clean wide open job site visual everything make sure everything has been uh, done to your satisfaction then start pulling down your masking and have a big garbage bin or something that everything can go into otherwise they're going to leave a mess potentially at your site sometimes we haul stuff away but if we have a garbage bin at site that's for that use that's what we'll do we'll put the stuff into there so i hope that helps so ken writes big important question if you overfill an area and then cut back to flush does that erase the vapor barrier part of the foam other words does cutting the foam cure or after cure allow it to be affected by wet air or water great question pertaining to closed cell foam the vapor barrier properties of closed cell foam are not found in the skin of the foam the overall density and chemical composition cell structure of the foam is what provides the vapor diffusion as well as the final skin against the substrate so when your supplier is testing vapor barrier qualities or vapor permeance we should say of closed cell foam it always has to be tested against a particular substrate so they're going to do a test against OSB they're going to do a test on plywood they're going to do a test on concrete metal uh, and drywall cardboard these are pretty well the most common from there they're going to have a core density done and out of that core density then they do a desiccant dry cup test it's industry standard it's an ASTM test and that will determine how many nanograms 
of vapor diffusion or perms if you're in the US they use perms in, in Canada we use nanograms but that is going to show at a given thickness on a given substrate how much foam it takes to reach vapor barrier so you cannot sit there and say that two inches is a vapor barrier because on concrete it's not it's less than that it's less than that on plywood so if you have a two or a three or a four inch application of closed cell foam cutting and shaving the foam is not going to remove the vapor barrier quality of it because it's not found in the skin the overall product the density the cell structure and the substrate make up the total accumulated permeance rating of the product at a given thickness and that's what you need to go on so you can shave the foam you can deal with it um, trim it back and you're good to go uh, you just need to get the, all, all suppliers will have a chart on this and you can check it out but in normal 2x6 even 2x4 construction you're, you're generally nowhere even near cutting and trimming the foam back to be too thin um, to, to lose any of your qualities so this concludes our first Q&A session. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's been productive for you and for me. Once again, I want to thank all of the subscribers and to all of the people that asked a question. I hope that you stick around and we have many more.